A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priest and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. It is now the third day since these things took place. Some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body there. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Then beginning with Moses... And all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. This is the word of the Lord. I hate waiting in line. I hate waiting in line, especially when other people are taking such a long time, like this woman standing in front of me. I could tell that she was going to take forever when she got to the front. And I saw her start to fidget with something around her neck. And I could see that it was a pass, a pass for the Boston train system. It had her name and the words, The Ride, printed across the top. The Ride. That meant this woman had a disability. And I wondered what kind, and I wondered if it was going to hold me up. When she was called to the counter, the pharmacist asked for her name, and she showed her badge. And the pharmacist started to talk, and then, before she could say much, we all realized that the woman was deaf. So the pharmacist called over another pharmacist, and the two women started talking really loudly and really slowly to the woman. And the woman tried to speak back. She used as many hand gestures as possible, but it was rather useless. And ensuring that this woman had no sense of privacy, the pharmacist basically yelled that she had three prescriptions to pick up, which totaled $41.48. And so the woman reached for her wallet and pulled out two 20s. And one pharmacist yelled back, you need a dollar forty-eight more. The woman took both hands to open them, showing that she had nothing left. Both pharmacists looked exhausted and frustrated. One even rolled her eyes. Well, you're just going to have to come back when you have the rest of the money. And I stood two feet away. I felt my heart burn. I felt it burn with the most stinging of flames. I was so close. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening scriptures to us? Cleopas and his friend turned to each other, shocked now for the third time this week. First, it was the crucifixion of their beloved rabbi, Jesus. And then their two friends, Mary and Joanna, told them that when they went to the tomb, he was gone. And now they just realized that their fellow traveler on the road to Emmaus had been Jesus, the risen Christ himself. 
And as soon as they recognized him in the breaking of the bread, he vanished. And so with Jesus gone, the disciples turned to one another for an explanation. They turned to each other and asked if it was possible that maybe their hearts knew that Christ was in their midst, even if their eyes and their minds and their ears hadn't. Can you imagine that heartbreak? Can you imagine how these two disciples must feel? They had walked with this man who they thought was a stranger, this man who asked them questions, and then who called them out and told them every single piece of scripture that proved his existence. And yet they still didn't know who it was. This is the same man who they'd been walking with and talking to every day, the same man they saw perform miracles, the same man for whom they had dropped everything to follow, the same man who had just hung on a cross in front of them. And they didn't recognize him. They wondered if maybe it was possible for their hearts to react to the presence of Christ in a way that was so innate, so natural, so internal. And so they asked, did you feel that? Did you feel those flames? Did you feel that burning? How could they ignore the words they thought they knew so well? Lessons that they had heard before, stories that they had lived with their teacher. Their hearts were burning. But instead of paying attention to their heartburn, these disciples, they just took a bottle of Tums. And they just went along their way. And I don't blame them. Who wants heartburn? Who wants to have to feel all that stuff? And so we turn our attention to our minds, to our heads, don't we? It's like we're all just heads walking around without bodies. We keep our heads in separate hemispheres from our bodies, an equator between what we think and what we feel. And on the walk to Emmaus, these two disciples were doing the same thing. As they journeyed away from Jerusalem, away from the trauma and the prophecy come true, Cleopas and his friend divide themselves from what they had felt days before. It was a lot. Crucifixion, resurrection, they had a lot on their plate. Why add something more? And so they wrapped themselves up in their own heads and in their own interest. They ignore that their hearts are reaching from deep inside. Their hearts are reaching out towards a familiar voice, a familiar demeanor, a familiar teacher. Instead, the disciples just keep talking, keep walking. And even when Jesus starts to tell them the stories of the prophets, even when he starts to tell them the great story beginning with Moses, they just have no idea. Inside the disciples' hearts, all these scriptures are swirling around like mad. They're jumping up and down on their hearts like little children holding up a megaphone and screaming, Hey you! You know me! You know my message! You know my lessons! But the disciples just walk along like everything's normal. Like the scriptures are just words. Just stories about a people they've never met. The disciples ignore their burning hearts, ignore the familiar words coming out of the familiar mouth of their Messiah, Jesus. Maybe it was all too familiar. Maybe it was all too normal, 